on YouTube, you already know this is Banco number two. Banco number two. Y'all remember Banco? Y'all remember that? It's been a while since we did the Banco series. Banco number one did very popular. A lot of you guys had success already. Thanks for everybody to comment. If you haven't, I'll link it. But um, hey, Twitch, say hi to YouTube. YouTube, say hi to Twitch. You already know how we do. You are watching right now. So, Wurpsy, thanks for the Prime. What up, what up? We're doing the Banco number two. So, the Banco I chose here actually was the Bishop D2 line that is probably going to be played by somebody. It's going to be played. Just find you to the channel. Oh, thanks, bro. Appreciate you. What up, Wurpsy? Welcome. So here we go. We're looking at this. This is the Banco. So if you missed the first one, of course, I will link it um, in the description so you can see it. Uh, Banco is my power chess piece. Here it is. D4, Knight F6. We're using forward chess. Uh, C4, C5, right? So of course, we're going to fast forward past these parts because you should already know this from the first Banco. If you don't, if you, you then go back and watch video number one. So after B5 here, this crazy move, right? B5 captures. We already went A6. We looked at B takes A6. Right, and then g6 is our move. Knight c3. This is all stuff we followed already. Bishop g7, knight f3, right, castles, and e4. The last one we looked at was the Finchetto variation, right? So we looked at the Finchetto variation before. So this was not Finchetto. This is uh, the e4 version where they're just trying to defend the pawn on a6. So what we're going to do is play queen a5. This is a very, very active move. Flex real hard. Two times for the people in the back, right? Queen a5, this is a very active move. So what this does, in fact, chat, you tell me, what does queen a5 do? Why are we playing queen a5? Why are we playing queen a5? What's the idea with this queen a5 move? And what I like to teach, especially with two students as well, is ideas. I want you to remember some of the ideas here. So if you forget these moves, you're going to remember the ideas. Let's get, let, let's, let's learn. Let's get it. Okay. All right. What we got? So knight takes e4, pins and threatens knight e4. Maybe blunders white, oh, white blunders e4 to prevent knight from moving. Pins knight, attacks pawn, develops attack on the queen side. Uh, though not at my level. Okay. Active move is a secret. All right. So in fact, guys, you're all correct. Queen a5 is beautiful because it pins the knight. The knight is now pinned. Threatening knight takes e4. So if your opponent plays something like bishop e2, you can first off tell them that, okay, first off, uh, you're going to tell them they are 100% premium Garbage. every single time right because we're going to hit him with knight takes e4 for the score and it's a wrap you can't move you can't do nothing about that one and you up a pawn that's a beautiful shot there and immediately you're already winning due to the pin here due to the pin very real it's a very real thing perfect so let's fast forward we go e4 boom after the e4 move queen a5 bishop d2 this is a very 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 logical move that's going to happen in your games oh. They're going to do this because it's a very logical move. What does it do? Right. If you look at this from white side, right, and we go back a move, what would you play in this position? Right. Look at this. In fact, let's go back, you know, even from right here, from like the live Banco, they play in Banco, captures G6, Knight C3. You go Knight F3, you play E4, big center, trying to play E5. Boom, they hit you with Queen A5. And then Bishop D2, because you want to deal with this annoying Queen move. Perfect. This is our starting point. Of course, we're not going to keep the video too long. We're going to get in and get out here and learn some ideas here. The ideas, remember I talked about, we want to talk about ideas here. Huge idea in the Banco is play on the queen side of the board. Let me say that again for the people in the back. Play on the, on the queen side of the board every single time. Play on the queen side of the board, right? So that's where your play is. You're not doing no super king side attack. It can happen, but you're doing all your play on the queen side of the board. That's where you're aiming. So let's see. What happens? Okay, from the beginning in this line here, I'm gonna read some of the notes as well. D4, knight of six, c4, c5. B5, play on the queen side. Man. There you go, cougar bait. There you go. B5, c takes a6, snap those, g6, knight c3. And it's always cool because you're like, you know, you're not taking these pawns. Like, look how advanced this opening is, right? <laughs> when you play something like this <laughs> and you play b5, they first thinking, okay, you take it. Then you play a6. And then they're thinking you're, and you still don't take it. Like, it's really sometimes frustrating to your opponent. <laughs> and they just sitting over there. And really, you're totally fine as black. Bishop g7, e4, castles, knight of three, and queen a5. After bishop d, after bishop d2, do you play bishop a, takes a4? Or no? Well, first off, you can't even take a4, my guy. But I know what you mean. Bishop takes a6 is what you mean. In fact, and actually, let's see what it says. So, in fact, position says, at the start of this variation, this was the main line for white. He protects indirectly, has a pawn on e4, finishing development, and you are right. Bishop takes a6. Look at you, big fella, red hot mama. 
is correct. That's what they're recommending here. There's a bishop a6. There's also an e6 that happens as well. There's a few moves. I've seen d6 as well. I've seen knight a6. But let's see what he says after bishop a6. White has two main possibilities. They can take the bishop on a6, followed by a queen e2. With the idea, uh, or sorry, or simply bishop e2 with the same idea. But really fun to play. Yeah, save a lot says e6 is fun. And the Banco is really, really sharp. Okay. So um, Bishop e2, if white takes on a6, we enter rather forced lines and probably black equalizes without any problem. If white plays Bishop e2, then the position becomes much more complicated. But for now, let's start with some sidelines. So of course, we definitely do want to look at a knight a4 here. And this is, uh, and the reason why is like, people are going to move this knight. You didn't move your queen. Let's the lower levels. They're going to try to move the knight and exploit the fact that your queen's over here. So we, we, we definitely specifically picked this one to show what happens if they move this knight. Because this is going to happen at certain levels, depending on your rating. They're going to move the knight and, and, you're, and you're not, you know, a lot of you will hang your queen. Y'all, there are people in the chat right now that's going to hang this queen. So I'm showing this the, so we don't hang the queen. So move the queen out of the way if he's going to hit you, you know, moves the knight. And then bishop say <laughs> over time with me, right? People laugh. Yeah, you're going to hang the queen, right? So we need to figure out what to do if he moves the knight. So they move the knight. Obviously, you move your queen back. Bishop takes a6. We take with the knight, queen c2. And this awesome move, queen a7. This move promises equality. Now think about this. We still down a pawn, right? Three, six, seven, three, six. We still down a pawn here. Right, uh, so this is a uh, promising equality being down a pawn, all because of peace activity. This move promises equality. If Black wants more than a position, he can play e6 or rook f to b8. Pretty, pretty nice. That'd be funny. Yeah, that's right, Dale. So queen a7, and then castles getting out of the way. Knight to b4. They say if a3 happens, because this could happen, trying to stop your knight swinging into b4. Knight c7, knight c3, queen a6, preventing some castling from happening. White could go knight e2. Now black has some interesting moves available to keep activity. They suggest knight b5 with the idea of queen a4. And also a possible e6. The possibilities here are so endless for the Banco player. Very nice. Castle, knight b4. Bishop takes, queen takes a4. Queen takes a4. And you get a position like this where you take on even. Look at all these exchanges. Exchange, exchange. Oh my goodness. Look at this. And then there's more. Bishop and oh wait, there's more. And then bishop takes, takes, king takes, and equal. Sheesh, that was nuts. Bro, these lines are crazy. Oh my goodness. It's very active. I remember playing a lot of these lines with a lot of activity, even being able to win myself here. But they have this other line here after rook takes a4. They show bishop takes. Knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, rook b1, rook b8, rook e1, and f5 defending the knight. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. That's if he moves the knight, right? I'll, have, I'll be scared about why I have to pass pawn, but you have to remember activity, Padaka. And it is about repetition. I recommend don't go through this once, go through this many times. And remember the activity. Whenever you are passive, that is when you should be scared of any conversation they may have or material deficit, whether that be one pawn, two, or whatever. But you don't play passive. The Banco is not for the passive player. So if you feel like you're going to ever play passive, you need to not play this right now. Right now. But if you can say, I'm going to be active, then you can play the Banco, big fella. You can call yourself Big Fella Banco. Okay, here we go. So in the next one, we're going to look at this Bishop B2. The pass pawn on A2, which is only here for Y. Uh, maybe one more move. Yeah, correct. The nice see three, four of the pawn anyway. Um, that's a good question. Knight c3 looks good. Let's turn the engine on, which we can do. White to move is equal. Wow, interesting. But let's say I go h3 is, and let's just say knight c3 and bishop d6 is playable, they say, and then rook b7. Oh, your tactics have to be nice here. There are lots of checks and weird stuff. Do you see what's going on? Like, there's a lot of things going on. So, and you can always turn this engine on if you ever have questions. That's why I like this. What I like about Porsche Chess too. So it makes you turn it, turn it on. But there is a lot that could be happening there. Wookie skill. Well, this next one though, for this next YouTube video here is, or this next part of the video is, we're actually going to look at the Bishop E two line. It's very common, right? 
This one's common as well. And maybe if we have time, we'll look at the bishop take a6. I'm going to kind of blow through it because I do want you to guys to see that one too. So, okay, we follow in Banco. This is all the stuff. Castle, right? We don't worry about nothing. We put the queen on a5. These are automatic moves. Bishop d2, boom, take on a6. And then he says, ah, I'm going to play bishop e2. Very easy. I'm trying to castle, right? White waits one move before taking on a6. And we place black's queen on the best square in one move. Uh, we, Right, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He takes, right? Because if bishop takes a6, then the queen goes to a6, which is the best square for it to be on. And it stops the king from castling, right? So, okay. But uh, it, it, it doesn't, it, bishop takes doesn't happen. Black has uh, three options. You can take on e2. So right here, and he's showing you right here, telling you there's options. It's always good to have options. So you can take on e2. You can play d6. Or you can play queen b4. All right, take on e2. D6. Or queen b4. All possible moves. In fact, oh my goodness. Thinking back at the files. Oh man, I played queen b4. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, literally, I've played queen b4 in this position. And I've actually had a great game um, with this line. Queen b4 is a nice one. It's very tricky because I'm hitting both of the pawns, b2 and e4. But uh, in my old day, in my, uh, my Banco days, I definitely like the queen b4 uh, in this position. But let's see what he likes. Bishop takes e2. Queen takes and queen a6, which is more uh, modern, more modernish. This is what, uh, or I mean, they, they're more standardish. In fact, I would say they, they, they've done a lot of this queen a6 stuff. That's the only dangerous move. Uh, oh, a4. A4 is dangerous. Why is a4 dangerous? Because they're trying to put a grip on the b5 square. Put the knight there. If you can't have your queen side play, you're not doing good. Remember, where is the play in the banco? Queen side. You can't play queen side. You have nothing. A4, pretty good. It's trying to lock down the play. Very good stuff. Make sure you read that. Are we skipping over it, though? E6, break it up. Nice center. Got to break it up, big fella. Can't stay there for long. Took with the F pawn. That was nice. Took with the F pawn. Texas game takes a follow. Queen takes. Yeah, you could take. I mean, queen just take, but queen takes and knight takes is usually what happens there. In fact, they actually show. I think they do cover that. Not here, but um, here there is a line with queen takes. And obviously, you do want to know what happens on queen takes instead of a4. If queen takes, you can always take with the rook, but I like taking with the knight, which is a standard here. We put the knight on b4, rook to b8, d6, knight d7, knight uh, g4 as well. In cases like that, you never take the, well, not never, but usually you do not take the queen um, on e2. Usual cases for that. But it is possible. In fact, they mentioned a line here. After queen takes, king takes, knight a6, a5 is actually favoring white now. They put an x clam there because the a5 is now in the fifth rank into black's territory, being able to try to queen or uh, et cetera. And then they give this whole line here, right? This is a deep line. This is very deep. And they're saying after all of this, white is slightly better. Sheesh. Thanks, Jordan. Wow, that's that's crazy, huh? That's a lot. Okay, but let's go back to where we were. This is uh where we were after a4. It was the e6 break up the center. Something that's not just in Banco. Every opening, hit the center. E6, d takes f6 is interesting. F6 with opening up the rook file. That uh that's interesting because usually you would take with the d pawn. But I like that he kept the structure here. If you take this way, look how weak this pawn looks. And naturally, naturally, you would actually take with the D pawn. But taking with the F pawn, is it just doesn't feel right. But in fact, it's 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 100% brilliant. Okay. Opens the F file. You got the D pawn. They could go to D5. I think it's great. Knight to B5. No trading. Queen goes back to B7. Dynamic. Pre uh, preserve the center pressure. Put it right. And preserve the center pressure exactly. A e4, knight takes e4 is a possibility. Um, in some cases, maybe even sacking the queen. What I mean is, let's say something. I mean, this is just a ridiculous move. Queen e3, right? Rook and then queen takes b5. You just want to be aware of what's in the position. This still is not that good. You also had a bishop c1 there. But be aware of the tactics. Of course, that's not working. But be aware. You just you, Sometimes they work, right? Isolated C pawn can't be good for black there. Yeah, correct, Latin. One hundred percent. So knight B five, E uh, queen B seven, E five, knight D five. You see how active the pieces are. It almost feels like you're not down a pawn. This is how bankos go. 
If your bank hole doesn't feel like this, you're playing the bank hole. Very, very wrong. Bruh. If you, your bank holes don't feel like this, right? You know, so you have to be active, right? Think active, activity. How can I stay active? Because when the piece is very active, I mean, look at the F4 square. It doesn't feel like black is down anything. But in fact, he's uh, down upon. So we sacrifice. You can use this right here. Uh, de, de Harpoon. All your info right there, big fella. Okay, knight d5 castle did happen. Knight c6, we develop. Rook c1, queen b8. Oh, we got to fly through this. I forgot. So we get to the last one. So the video is not too long um, for YouTube here. We're flying through some moves here. But as we see, we got more activity. Um, a lot of times the problem is the A pawn in the Banco is, is the A pawn. So we are really, really pushing and relying more on being aggressive, a tactics, trying to get to the king fast. Get to the king fast and using our pieces, the long star, the uh, long diagonal as well. Because if that A pawn gets too active, then, you know, it's scary. Look how active they're playing. D4. I right, didn't even move the knight. I mean, what on earth is that? Mini 4, D3. This is wild. Look at this. Bro, what is this? Oh, my goodness. Bro, the man played D3 here. Interesting. Oh, my goodness. Okay, Rook takes E5. Oh man, rookie two, queen takes, takes. Wow, what a show. Clearly black is facing it, but you got to be real toward it for sheesh. I mean, for anybody, I mean, this is crazy. That was a nuts line. But the, did you see how active that was? Every every game I've played in the Banco has been like that for me. Very active, tactics everywhere, I think. That is the wave. Um, that's the queen before one. So he's showing you actually in here as I'm scrolling. He's giving you the other options too as well. Like the queen b4 line I talked about earlier. Uh, bishop, queen, queen e2. Let's look at this one real quick. Yeah, we're totally remember all the Yeah, go ahead, dumb knight. That's perfect. Yeah, remember I saw the theory there. No, that's the wrong thing to do. In fact, the right thing to do is actually look at how do we get to the certain part and go over in the games to try to remember the ideas. What you want to memorize is the ideas, not the moves. I mean, obviously, you can memorize moves, but ideas more than the moves. Okay, we'll, we'll uh, end it here. We're going to just look at a few moves out of this one, not the entirety of it, but just a few ideas. So what happened here is you may have someone that might capture immediately. After bishop takes, you know, there's a queen takes, there's also a knight takes, but queen takes is standard, right? It stops the, the castle. Queen e2, and then you have e6, which is interesting. I like the breaking up of the center immediately. e6, d e6 takes, oh, with the f pawn. I always remember take with this f pawn, guys. You see how, I how many times if taking with this f pawn? That's nice to keep the d5 pawn open. And it's almost like we got pass pawns. Yeah, I know you got your little a pawn, but it's almost like we have pass pawns. Rook c8, one. I'm just trying to fly through moves here, see what we got. Takes, takes, knight g4. That's a, a common uh, Banco move. Remember this for a very long time. If you didn't know, now you know. The knight on g4 swinging back to e5 in many cases. Also opening up this long diagonal. Look at bishop takes c3 and rook takes a2 is now a threat. Rook d2 takes knight back to f6. Hit this pawn. Making threats every move. That was a nice developing move though. Okay, knight c6, e5. Made some more moves. Nice c4 looks good. Rook a4 and probably doubling. D6 with pressure on the a file. No. No pressure on the a file. Bishop g5, knight d7. Knight f4 and king f7. With our idea of rook c to a a8, black has sufficient compensation. Absolutely. In these type of games, black just feels like they're never down a pawn. Because you have so many moves and activity. You can always push this mobile center usually. Knight on c4. You're a, you mean a work on a4. This is all white's camp. And then if you win the pawn back, you can even win the game. All right, which is a, a very problematic many times um, for people. I think we'll end. Actually, sorry, we got to fly through this one. This is the last one. Bonus, bonus here because I see this. I see this e e6, and I see queen takes, and we got to see right. You got to see what happens. I'm gonna fly because I got so many moves. Exactly. But you will be able to blitz a lot of these out quickly. Takes, and this one takes with the F pawn again. Knight before. Let's just figure out what we're looking for is where do the pieces go, right? Let's start again from here. When you're looking at games and looking at openings and et cetera, I mean, it's good to, where do the pieces go, right? We got we got this part down. 
We know how to get to this part in the Banco. Queen takes e6. Where do the pieces go? Usually you get, you know, we take with the f pawn. We put the knight on b4. It's better place there. Put the knight on d3. It was attacked, or actually it wasn't, but it's attacking d2. Probably bring the rook in next. He played d5. Nice strike in the center. Rook now. Pushing now. Look at the center. That's pretty good. Okay, hitting the knight. My knight's hit. Maybe take his. C4. Wow. And it says unclear. You could also go for this. Rook takes, takes here. I think black can be pleased. He found his way to complicate matters. There's another thing. I like what he said. Complicate matters. In the banco, you're, you're being complicated. You're going to give up a pawn. You want activity. You don't want none of that, like, chill, you know, I'm trying to be equality, bro. I'm trying to come, I'm coming at you right now. You can have the pawn. I'm going to come at you the whole game, and I'm going to be very active and complicate things. That's the Banco Gambit right there. And this is number two. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Of course, make sure you guys are watching this and reading this on your own. And that's up to YouTube if you haven't already. And we'll see you on the next video.